Hello everyone and welcome back to The Favorite Comics and this is episode 15. This is the final main episode. We got one more coming up after this next week that is going to be dedicated to the honorable mentions. But episode 15, we are going out on the highest of notes and we are talking about probably the one I was most excited to talk about because quintessentially if anybody asks me what is your favorite comic book, I say this is it. My favorite comic book of all time, the one series I go back to a lot. I have I only discovered it recently, but because I discovered it recently, I have gone back to the well more often than not, and that of course is Bill Willingham's Fables. Now, I discovered Fables last year, and instantly I was hooked. After the first issue, I was like, this is exactly my type of series. It's exactly up my alley. And I've bought every issue of the book. I got all of the digital issues. I've gotten most of the trades that have come out. I've gotten single issues of the book. Every time I can see something Fables that I want, I buy it. Because this book, to me, is exactly what I love about a long-running comic book series. It's all in continuity. Everything is the same creator telling his story across multiple arcs, doing different things with different pacing, different characters, a unique story each time you get the book, and it builds up tension so well, so poignantly. It is such a fantastic slow burn that really justifies itself in the end, and in the long run, I'm just really happy with it. You know, it's rare that a comic book lasts for 150 issues, and even more rare that in those 150 issues, every main character gets their arc and gets their arc that has an actual ending. This is one of those rare books that does that. Each character you see in this story, whether they are there from issue 75 in the last half, whether they're there from issue 1 and they leave in issue 60, every character who plays a seminal role in the story at some point has their moment to shine and has their arc that feels perfect for the natural course of the story. So, what is Fables? Some of you are probably like, oh, it's that weird Vertigo book, they made that Telltale game about it. Here's Fables to you. Imagine every, like, grim fairy tale character you knew. Everybody from, like, the Disney pantheon of princesses that was already a fairy tale. Every character from folklore or something. All of those characters exist, and they exist in their own fantasy world. What if in that world, there is a giant war, and they are pushed out of that world, and they have to come to ours? Basically, we are seeing the characters in our fables, and our stary- in our fairy tales, and our storybooks coming into the modern era and seeing how they live and handle life in the big city of New York City. Now, we focus on a few main characters at the beginning. The story kind of starts off as this noir detective story, focusing on the character of Big B. Wolf. Now, Big B. Wolf, you guys could probably figure out who that's supposed to be. It's the big bad wolf. And guess who he's teaming up with? He's teaming up with Snow White, and they're going on this case to figure out a lot of stuff that happened. We are introduced to characters like Rose Red, Snow's sister, Jack Horner, you know, Jack be nimble, Jack be quick guy, like the Jack and the Beanstalk guy. Every fable about Jack is one guy. I love that idea. It's so funny. We got Prince Charming in here playing a conniving asshole. And we got the Flycatcher in here. We got Little Boy Blue. We got Beauty and the Beast. We got Old King Cole. It's like... All of these characters that you've read about, that you've heard about, stories about them for years and decades and millennia, everything you know about them, they're in the modern day New York just living it up trying to survive and it starts off. Something I truly love about this book is that it just starts off really small. It's like there's a murder. We have to figure out who was murdered, how they were killed, who killed them. And then slowly we build up into more elements and we learn it goes from this like who killed Rose Red and it builds up to oh my goodness, we're in the midst of a war and we are about to go to war with everyone in the world, in our world, in the real world, all these characters. It's just brilliant. It is such a brilliant storytelling piece. It does something I truly love when you have something that's like with a giant ensemble. You don't have to have every character in every issue or every episode. Like you need to focus on what the character needs to do in that moment. So experiencing different things like that for each issue, it really works for a story like this in a world like this. And it does a great job of representing those characters and keeping them true to themselves, you know. Prince Charming, he's the guy that's getting with all the princesses. He's going around to every rich girl, making them a princess, making them lovely. He's like a baron from the old world. It's absolutely brilliant the way they handle that character. He was one of the first ones I actually really liked, and his like his whole arc just starts off so small. You're just like, okay, Snow White can see through his bullshit, Cinderella can see through his bullshit, you know, they all see through his bullshit, and suddenly... 
He plays a bigger role in the universe and he actually does some important stuff. I really like that idea. Like you're just focusing on those things that made these characters their storybook character. But you're doing something different with them. I like that Snow White's the lead here because she's kind of like the one that's most well known. We all know she exists. You know, the Disney movie brought her into prominence again. Every so often that story is retold. We all know her here. This is my favorite interpretation of that character. It's absolutely breathtaking and fun. The writing is consistent throughout every issue. And something I really love is like, not every issue does this, but certain issues you will see like the artwork change or like this, the background portray a different type of thing where we're seeing like this, like oil painting where there's the backgrounds and like things are coming off. Some of the most notable stuff is like the, the arc that focuses on Flycatcher and Ambrose just kind of like coming into his own as his own character. The background will show like arts of like the frogs and lily pads just all around him as we're seeing the scenes with him. And it looks really cool. That stuff is really impressive to see. Like it's just such a good, slow, methodical burn that is so rare in comic books like this. You know, like we have a lot of like long running series and when you have the same creator on it can lose momentum sometimes but even if this wasn't planned out from the beginning like you can see certain moments where you'd be like okay if the book was to end here we'd get our conclusion but the fact that it went for 150 issues is pretty impressive i like it a lot like every moment matters every character has some great beats bigby is a fantastic lead because he is quintessentially the one who's playing against type in this world you think he would be you know He's the big bad wolf. You'd think he, throughout the entire book, you'd see him as like the aggressor, the one going against everyone, one of the biggest adversaries. But he's the entire time we're seeing Bigby prove himself to be the superior character, the superior man, the, like the better person than a lot of the other people we see in this world. He is constantly trying to prove to himself and to the world that he is a good person. And he's succeeding at that in a big and bad way. It is very cool. I love Bigby's story. His character is so fantastic. The stuff with him and Snow White. I know some people might think it's a little weird, especially towards the beginning, the way that Bigby kind of inserts himself into her world. It's kind of mischievous and a little uninteresting, but they, they handle it in a way that works for storybook characters. Like you're not going to be upset the way that they talk or they handle their situation. It works for the most part. I can't be mad about that. Like it's just exactly what you'd expect from that. I love it so much. One of my favorite characters in this book, and pretty much in all of comic books. Again, every character gets their moment, gets their arc. Boy Blue, like the, just the way that character goes from just being like the sidekick, like basically Robin, where he's just like he's good at doing everything. He's got a pretty intense history that people talk about. But we don't actually see him like doing stuff, and then suddenly we focus an entire arc on him being like a badass ninja in the in the old world. That's insane. That was such a cool thing. I'm trying to like tiptoe around spoiling things for this book just because I know a lot of people, especially younger people, they don't really go back to some of these Vertigo books. And I, I, I've always been an advocate for Vertigo. I think they've done some tremendous stuff. But I encourage you, you can find copies of this book all over the place. Fables is one of those books that always gets reprinted, always comes back because it, it's just that long lasting story you already understand what these characters are you know them you can come and right away be like oh yeah okay little bo peep i get it okay the three bears yeah i get it there's goldilocks so, like you know these characters enough already that coming into this you're just going to be like oh my goodness that's so cool what they're doing with pinocchio that's so cool what they're doing with geppetto it's amazing how they make this stuff work and it just goes to show you that sometimes an idea that is so simple that just sticks the landing on the execution because this essentially is pretty basic. It's bare bones. Like, it's the storybook characters. They're all together. It's a tale as old as time. We've seen it countless times, you know, once upon a time. Uh, once upon a time. Yeah, that's the show that ABC did. They did that too. It works, but Fables is just so bloody brilliant, so creative, so fun. There's just so many great arcs I love about this, especially, like, I, I love the beginning arcs. Those are all great setting up our world. The moment it gets, like, I think, in my opinion, and now it could go back and forth on depending on who you talk to about the who likes the book and who doesn't, I think some of the best stuff is about in the middle half, and I'm not saying that's because Snow White and Bigby take like a back burner a little bit and we let some other characters shine because they have great arcs at the beginning and in the middle, but I think my favorite part of the story focuses more on the stuff with Flycatcher, like that entire arc really just stuck with me because I'm like, that is such an interesting development to take with that character that I don't think anybody would be expecting if they started reading issue one. That's amazing. What's even more amazing is that this has become my favorite comic book, and I only started reading it last year. 
I think that just goes to prove, that should prove to you guys, I've been reading Moon Knight and Preacher over and over and over and over again for countless years. I've been reading them for so long, and the fact that I came to Fables last year and I consider it to be this good, this poignant, this powerful, this interesting, should just go, it should just show you guys that's how much this book has impacted me, has proven to stand the test of time. Uh, and it's pretty impressive too because it's had pretty much the same artist for over a hundred issues. Now, there's certain arcs and moments where you're like okay we got to get a new artist in here we got to get a new like team in here to do this thing but consistently it's been the same creative team for over 100 issues of 150 issue series that is very impressive and something you do not see a lot of in this industry that is just amazing and powerful and poignant And again, I can't get over how well a story like this balances its characters because that's something I think as a writer and as a creator or of any kind, you you just look at the moments, you're like, okay, this issue, it sets up this issue. This is going on conjectively with this one. We don't have to like focus on that because we could go to this character here. Every character, it amazes me that they made it work. Every character gets their moment. Every character has like their time to shine, their brilliance, their impactful nature. It is just amazing that they made it work. It really just impresses me and blows my mind away. And I know a lot of people have opinions on the finale or the final issue. I for one happen to think the final issue is really good. I actually think it's amazing. It's one of my favorite final issues for any run. And I just think it stuck the landing. And I I cannot talk about Fables enough. So here is my plea or my pitch to you guys. And I want to know your opinions on this. If anybody makes it to this far in in the audio recording or in the video, would you be interested in hearing my opinions on a Fables podcast? I've thought about doing it for a long time. We would take a single issue of the book. We would talk about it in depth and in detail. Would you be interested in hearing my opinions on that? Because I'd love to do it and just go in depth on fables. It is definitely something I could consider doing. I'd love to talk about it in greater detail with all of you. So please let me know what your thoughts would be on that. And thank you guys so much for staying with me for 15 episodes of The Greatest Comics or My Favorite Comics. It is amazing that we made it this far and I appreciate it. So, Fables, incredible, impactful, brilliant, poignant, great use of characters, great use of storybook characters, stuff we've seen before, but it works. I encourage you all to read it and I think you will all like it a lot. So, that is every reason. Not every reason, but a lot of the reasons why Fables is one of my favorite comics. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and to subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And if you're listening to this on the podcast feed, please give us a rating. It definitely helps out. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.